Hi, everybody. Welcome to Wednesday night, another night of exciting music that we're able to lift our voices and sing to the glory of God. You know, you never know what a day is going to bring, and it makes no difference within a church or in your own private home. We know that there's all sorts of things that we face, but God is greater than them. Amen? So come join us tonight as we sing this favorite old hymn. I heard an old, old story How a Savior came from glory How he gave his life on Calvary To save a wretch like me I heard about his groaning Of his precious blood's atoning Then I repented of my sin And won the victory Oh, victory But I know that there are just all sorts of thoughts and requests and thanksgiving and worship. And God loves us to come before Him with praise. And so that's why we, we love to kick off Wednesday nights with these uplifting choruses and hymns from really yesteryear. So tonight, I just invite you, if you have some prayer requests, please send them in. Just uh, type them in that little box below and, uh, or send them to the 509-309-0958 number. But right now, let's just ask the Lord to touch all that is said, all that is done here tonight in our service. And Father, that you be glorified and that this might be an uplifting time for our brothers and sisters who are watching or somebody just happened to come across this broadcast lord i pray that it touches them and ministers to them and helps them father along the path of the journey we praise you lord and we thank you in jesus precious name amen and amen walking in sunlight all of my journey over the mountains through the deep way Jesus has said, I'll never forsake thee. Promise divine that never can fail. Heavenly sunlight, heavenly sunlight, flooding my soul.
paid for me since I have been redeemed. Where I shall dwell eternally since I have been redeemed. Since I have been redeemed, since I have been redeemed, I will glory in his name. Since I have been redeemed, I will glory in my Savior's name. Well, we just want to let you know that if you want to know what's happening here at New Beginnings Chapel, you can simply text the word loop to 509-309-0958 and uh, you will get in the loop and hear all about the announcements that are coming up and things that are taking place, including our two Sunday morning services at 9 and 10.30 a.m. And that's every Sunday, and you don't have to make reservations. You can just show up. Uh, the only thing that's going to be different is on 4th of July. 4th of July, we will have one service only at 10.30 and so, but every other Sunday, 9 o'clock or 10.30 a.m. And one thing we want everybody to know that for the weekend of July the 4th, uh, we are going to be over at the... Uh, Walla Walla Fairgrounds at the large parking area just off of Tyaton for our 4th of July uh, fireworks booth. And this is a major fundraiser for our youth, for our sleep center, and for our soup kitchen that uh, New Beginnings uh, has been involved with for the last 10 years. And so um, if you go out and you purchase fireworks, I hope that you'll come by and and see, we'll also have a 4th of July train that the kids can ride on. So bring the kids out, tell everybody about it, and you can see more about it on our Facebook page. So we invite you to continue worshiping. I love this song, Blessed Assurance. Blessed Assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Heir of salvation, purchase of God. Born of His Spirit, we're washed in His blood. This is my story, this is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission. All is at rest. I am my Savior, am happy and blessed. Watching and waiting, looking above. Filled with His goodness, lost in His love. For oh, this is my story, this is my song. Praising my Savior. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. How much do you love Jesus tonight? This song, there's a name I love to hear, I love to sing its worth. It sounds like music in my ear, the sweetest name on earth. I would love to have you just type in that little box below where you're watching right now. And let us know how much you love Jesus. Also, while you're typing in there, if you have a note of praise that you can send to us, as I said earlier, or a prayer request, um, we, we want to know that you're with us tonight and that you are singing these choruses and that we want to be agreed in prayer with you as we lift up the name of Jesus. There is Oh, 
to set me free and it tells me of his precious blood that sinner's perfect so grateful for your love, Lord. And Father, we just want to praise you because you just, um, you bless us each and every single day. And we can never thank you and praise you enough. And Father, we're so grateful for the answers to prayer that you've already given us this week. We thank you, Lord Jesus, that Andy Shaw is um, released from the hospital and he's at home recovering. So, Father, we just give you the praise and the glory for that recovery, Lord. And we thank you that uh, Kathy Scott's sister, Sherry, also, Lord Jesus, has been released from the hospital, and Ed Voss's brother, um, released from the hospital. All these individuals who were just um, a few days ago in ICU. But, God, you, um, you have touched them, and now they are home. And so, Father, we just want to give you praise and glory and lift up your name and say thank you, Father. And those, Lord Jesus, that are still struggling, God, you know each and every need. And we just want to thank you in advance for those answers. Lord, you care about every minute little detail in our lives, and nothing is too small for you. I was listening the other day to someone who was talking about how she was on a a missions trip, and she was over living in a foreign country, and she didn't even have enough money for furniture for her apartment. And someone asked her, they said, have you prayed about it? And she said, you mean, have I prayed and asked the Lord for couches? No. She said, God has so many more important things and much bigger things than to worry about couches for me. And um, her friend said, you know, I think you should just really ask the Lord for couches. And so she said, well, I'll think about it. And that night she wrote down in her prayer journal, Lord, I just, um, I need couches. But she didn't ask you, Lord. She just wrote it in her prayer journal. And she said it wasn't 15 minutes later. And her phone rang and a friend said, hey, by the way, do you need some living room furniture? And she said it wasn't just a couch. It was a whole set of living room furniture that all matched. And she said it was just a way of telling her that you're in the little details and you care even about the little things that seem so mundane. So you care about the big things like people who are fighting for their lives in ICU. But Lord Jesus, you care about empty living rooms with couches because you care about us and you love us and you love every detail of our lives. So Father, we just want to give you praise and glory tonight and we ask that you would touch those that need a physical touch from you tonight. 
those that need um, a word of encouragement, that someone would reach out to them and just let them know that they were thinking about them. And Father, we'll give you all the praise and all the glory in Jesus' name. It is fun to be here tonight and to share with you um, get to sit here and talk about table talk a little bit but we have some birthdays to celebrate this week we've had quite a few birthdays over the course of the last week we um, on Saturday no Sunday Sunday we had Gina DeWeber and Pastor Randy and we talked about them last week and then um, Monday uh, was your birthday Sunday was Father's Day. Sunday was Father's Day. Yes, it and was. Uh, Father's Day was a wonderful day with my kids. <laughs> and yeah, also on yeah. Monday, Kimberly Guitardi. Now, Kimberly's birthday was on was Monday. Monday. Yes, yes, and yes, uh, yes. this week we have Norma Terry, Terry has a birthday coming up. But tonight, tonight. Today. 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 Happy birthday to yeah, you. to Brianna Branscombe, Brianna. who is our media tech back there, who yes. makes sure that everything gets broadcast out. And also my assistant. Yeah, and <laughs> she, she does so she, much around here. And so happy birthday to everybody, including yeah. you. Happy birthday. Well, thank you. So should we sing happy birthday? Uh, yeah. I th yeah. Let's okay. sing it to all three of them. And it's kind of hard <laughs> to sing happy birthday to yourself. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. God bless you. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Happy you guys. Birthday, well, um, you know, sometimes you, sometimes you, and it sound, I'm not sure how that came across tonight, but it might. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have to tell you, um, on Friday, no, Saturday, we called a, a friend. I was going to say we called an old friend, but um, we called a dear friend who's been a friend for a long time, uh -huh. uh, Pastor Jim Sparks back in Michigan. And uh, he was one of the first people. Uh, that we did concerts in his church for him was, right yeah. after we got married. He was pastoring then in a, a town called Munster, Munster, Munster Indiana. Indiana. Yeah. And, and by the way, do you know that Munster, Steve Muncy, is there in Munster, and he is the one who does Jesus of Nazareth, the, the oh, very cool. phenomenal uh, passion play, which we're kind of looking at. But, but back to Jim. Jim uh, has been a dear friend from... Um, the early. I mean, when I started yeah. in 1970. Way before we ever had kids. <laughs> yeah, 76, 77, I was with Jim, and then Kay and I fell in love, worked together for uh, about a year, and then got married, and you traveled many times back there with yeah, Susie. Yeah, and, it, and was, it, it was really fun, and too. And his horse, Rusty. Rusty, yes, yes. and uh, Mr. Coco Bar. Yeah. Um, I got to ride Mr. Coco Bar, but it was really fun uh -huh. to kind of sing happy birthday to Jim 
um, some different things happening in his life this week. Um, yeah. He and uh, Susie have been married for a long time, 40 some years. I think, it, well, maybe it's even 50. Um, mm -hmm. But I think they had their 50th wedding anniversary. And uh, she just recently had to move into a care facility uh, for some health issues. And so it was just a delight to be able to sing happy birthday to him. And it seemed to bring him great joy. Yep. And so uh, happy birthday to all of those yes. people. But we have some famous birthdays. I almost had Brianna come up here in front of the camera so you could really see <laughs> she what would she not like looks that. like. Brianna, is she, she prefers to be behind the camera. I should have had a, <laughs> a, candle, a cake with a candle on it so she'd come up and blow it out. Well, okay. this beautiful lady yes. was born today in 1929. Wow. I have no idea. <laughs> I mean, I'll, I'll know her when you flash the other well, picture Well, I will tell you, there, she, she was known for her singing. Wow. She was part of a very famous it's singing. not Loretta Young. No, it's she was part of a very um, sing famous singing family. The um, And then she mm -hmm. married a famous singer. Mm -hmm. So I do not know. That would be yes, Miss course, June, June Carter, Carter Cash. Boy, they change over the years. <laughs> they, I mean, she's a beautiful lady there, but... Uh, both she and Johnny are gone now. They yeah. are, and yeah. I have to tell you, she and her mom and sister sang in the Carter family group, and she was married twice before she ever married Johnny Cash. Mm, wow. And she and Johnny were married for 35 years, yeah. but she had three children, one from each marriage, and all three of her kids are successful country western wow. singers. Um, she would passed away in 2003 from complications of heart valve surgery, and Johnny died just four months later. Mm -hmm. And then her daughter passed away just a few weeks later from an accidental carbon monoxide poisoning on her tour bus. Now, was that uh, Johnny and June's daughter? No, it was, was from her second her marriage. Second marriage. Okay. And she was a distant cousin to President Jimmy Carter. I and see that. And they were very close that. friends and remained close friends until she passed away in 2003. So oh. happy birthday to Miss yes, June Carter Cash. Family, yes. And then this cute little guy. In 1948. He was, he was born, born in 1940. Yep. In 1948. And he is still living. Saint, Saint, what's the saying? It Saint says Saint uh, Benedict's, I think, Saint is what Benedict's. it says, which he attended a Catholic right, school. Right, right. Um, is that Nat Dean Cole? Can I tell you just a little bit about him? 48. He was one of three children yes. born to M.C. Thomas, a farm worker, and Leona Williams, who were descendants of American slaves. Uh -huh. His earliest known ancestors were slaves named Sandy and Peggy. Mm -hmm. His father abandoned the family when wow. he was just two years old. And huh. though his mother worked hard, she struggled to put food on the table. So she sent them to live with his grandparents. And while he was there, they sent him to private school, Catholic school. And he said of his grandfather, he was the greatest man he had ever known. Mm. He went on to attend Holy Cross College, and then he graduated from Yale with a law degree. Wow. And that would be... Yes. Chief, Chief Justice, Justice Clarence, Clarence Thomas. Thomas. You just have no Isn't idea. that amazing? Yeah. Wow. It's that just amazing. absolutely amazing what transpires with someone yep. who basically was born into poverty, and now he is one of the most powerful men in our country. Um, this is Christopher Latham Scholes. Uh -huh. Do you know Christopher Latham Scholes? I do not. I do <laughs> well, not. today in 1868, he... Scholes. Scholes foot pads. No. Nope. No? No. Nope. Uh, he, he did get a patent, though, today yeah. in 1868 for the very first one of these. Do you okay. know what it is? Yes. Well, what is it? It's a typewriter. Typewriter. Scholes typewriter. In fact, mm. he... Well, you sure couldn't wear that. Uh -huh. Well, <laughs> what's interesting was he's... Noted for being the one who created the QWERTY keyboard. The court, QWERTY? Quir QWERTY keyboard. Oh, the QWERTY. Yeah, by keyboard. putting the letters in the order that he did, it was the first typewriter that was in that configuration of the QWERTY keyboard. Wow. And uh, they said that it was the first successful typewriter to ever be sold. The ones before it were pretty much failures. But he designed the QWERTY keyboard in this typewriter, and it was the first successful one. And today in history is when he secured the patent at the for top that. Of that if that's I think uh, that's just paper. <laughs> uh, oh, okay. Yes. So crazy. And June twenty third, nineteen eighty one. June twenty third, nineteen eighty one. This was just a few months before we got married, but I uh -huh. don't remember this. But this is pretty. This is crazy. This is actually really something this crazy. This wasn't the burning of the American flag, was it? In the middle. No. Of the <laughs> So let me just tell you, this today, I'm going to... Is this a long story? 
Well, it's a very interesting story. Okay. All right, I'm so listening with all ears. It's the longest, longest game. baseball game in history. Okay, this game started on April 18th, and this is professional baseball. This game started on April 18th and ended on June 23rd after 33 innings. And let me just tell you a few little things about this. So it was the Pawtucket Red Sox. Of course it was. Who beat the Rochester Red Wings. Oh, of course. I know. A score of three to two in 33 innings. Okay. So the they Red Sox. At two to two for okay, all those Okay, listen days, to this. Huh? This is crazy. The Red Sox and the Red Wings, the two teams, were a triple A international league. And so they started this game. The game went 33 innings with eight hours and 25 minutes of play time. 32 innings were played on April 18th and 19th of 1981. Uh -huh. been okay. okay. And then it was finished. The final 33rd inning was played on June 23rd, 1981. And here's what happened. Okay. So they didn't play every day okay. or every week. <laughs> I'm, up till, I'm about to up tell to you. June 23rd. So the game began Saturday night at 8.25 p.m. On June 23rd. On April, April 18th. 18th. Okay. Yep. Okay. After a delay of 30 minutes due to problems with the stadium lights, there was an estimated 1,740 people in attendance. Okay. Wow. The game continued throughout the night and well into Easter Sunday morning. Mm -hmm. They said that the weather was so cold that players actually burned the broken bats just to stay <laughs> warm, and some of the wooden benches in the stadium. The clubhouses ran out of food, and after Pawtucket's Luis Aponte pitched his seventh to tenth innings in relief, he was allowed to leave before the game ended, and Aponte's wife did not believe his explanation of why he returned home at 3 a.m. on Sunday morning. He promised her that the Sunday newspaper would prove his story true, but they had to wait because the paper didn't come out until Monday morning explaining the game. By 4 a.m., are you ready for this? Uh, By 4 a.m., the players were delirious from exhaustion. And so somebody called Harold Cooper, who was the team owner, and he said, they reached him by phone, and they said it was sometime after 3 a.m., and the horrified Cooper ordered that they stop the game immediately in the current ending. Inning. So finally at 4.07, the end of the 32nd ending, and more than eight hours after it began, the game stopped. There were only 19 fans left in the seats, all of whom were sound asleep. As the players left and went home to rest, they had to go back to the ballpark at 11 because they had to play another team that afternoon. So they were going to go ahead and play the rest of this game that night. But they were so tired that the doctor, the team doctor, Doc Edwards, requested they delay because of risk of injury to the players because they were so tired. So they waited until the Red Wings were to come back in town again, which was in June. Yep, June 23rd. And so in front of a sellout crowd of 5,746 attendees, they began the 33rd inning. That evening, it took one inning an only 18-minute game to finish when someone scored a run and they ended 3-2. to two. <laughs> Can you believe how it's a game that is like 33 innings mm -hmm. long well, the way over that it two looks, months The way that it looks, so April 18th, and they played <laughs> every day until June 23rd, but that's not how it works. But they played till 4 o'clock in the morning, yeah. and they mm -hmm. were burning the benches and burning the bats <laughs> to stay warm, and they couldn't even see straight. One guy said, he said that he hit the tying run, mm -hmm. and he said he wasn't sure if his teammates were going to congratulate him or pummel him because they were so tired they just wanted it to be over. Wow, well, that was in 1981, huh? 1981, I don't remember that. Do you remember? our wedding in 1981 mm -hmm. great things happened in 1981 i do so remember that, was, that, that was good. so yeah well, so anyway you come up with some very interesting um things in history and um, you must do a lot of work on this you must look for the stories and well i tried to find things that would be interesting <laughs> and so i thought that was kind of interesting you know that there would be a 33 inning baseball game we went to the sweets game the other night yes we did and, and we won one. the sweets yes. won Yes. Uh, we were playing against Corvallis, yeah. and uh, it was a good game. I enjoy going to baseball. Yeah. It's, a, it's a fun thing to do. What do you do. think about football? I like football. Yeah. What do you think about basketball? <laughs> you know, it's crazy about that. I know. Yeah, I, you know, so soccer and yeah. basketball for me is just like back and forth, back and forth, back uh -huh. and forth. So, yeah. yeah. Well, we celebrated the Father's Day.
We did. This last Sunday, and uh, you gave all the dads a dad's root beer. And we a, did, a with a, a nice big mug that had the church lo logo on it. Speaking of church logos, I was noticing your shirt tonight. Oh, thank you. Yes, yes. That's pretty cool. I had mentioned to you that I would like to get some shirts with our logos on it, and uh, for my birthday, she ordered me four shirts. And so let me know what you think about them, guys. Uh, this is our new logo. I didn't wear mine tonight. I didn't know you were going to wear yours. Yeah. Or I would have worn mine. I don't tell you everything. No, don't, you don't. I, I, I don't <laughs> tell you everything. But you kind of know pretty much what I'm going to do. You know, uh, you've been married to me for how many years now? 40. 40. Why do you say it like that? 40. 40. Wow. Speaking of 40, Pastor Randy and Miss Kelly just celebrated 40 yesterday. I don't care. We've been married 40. <laughs> they no, beat us yes, by a no, few no, months. No, I am. I am excited for them. And we celebrated Randy's birthday on Sunday yeah. as well. And their 40th wedding anniversary. I really do care. If they go back and look at this, I really do care. Um, but uh, birthdays and anniversaries, man, time goes fast. It does. Seems like just yesterday, just it was yesterday, 1981, when uh, you asked me to marry you. you know, it was just. It <laughs> I was don't exciting. remember it quite that way. Don't you? Oh, no. Okay. Well, Father's Day. Let's just kind of recap a little bit about what we shared uh, on this uh, wonderful day from Deuteronomy 6, 6, and 7. Scripture says, "This commandment that I give you today." are to be written on your hearts, impress them on your children. I love that. Impress them upon your children. Talk about them when you sit at home and when you walk along the road, when you lie down and when you get up. You know, Old that, Testament. That pretty much covers it. Yeah, Old Testament uh, requesting of the Lord. How often do we sit down with our children and talk about the scriptures? How often do we talk about the commandments of the Lord? How often do we just walk along and talk with our kids about Christ and Christianity and the belief and being born again and, and all of that? Um, well, I have to tell you, our, our five-year-old granddaughter, uh -huh. Cameron, uh, she just started preschool. And she's going to a Christian preschool. And uh, she came home her first day from her preschool. And her mama said, are you going to tell KK what you learned today? And she had this little um, paper and inside it had a window, and inside there was something that slid up and down. At the bottom on the outside was this rock mound. And when she slid the paper up, these flames came up above those rocks. And I looked at her and I said, you must have learned about Elijah today. And she said, yes, I did. And she just was just jabbering and telling me. And I thought, you know how powerful that is that she's learning the word of God and learning the stories mm -hmm. at, you know, the precious age of five years old. Yeah. And those, those memories will stick with her for a lifetime. She'll remember those stories. And um, we had Pastor Randy's granddaughter just a couple months ago who on a Sunday morning got up and, and quoted the entire 13th chapter of Corinthians. And I think that's what the scripture is meaning when it says impress them on your children. You know, we need to tell those stories. We need to pass those on to our children. We need to help them to memorize scripture and to impress them on them every single day. Mm -hmm. To be able to let them know that there really is a perfect father. There's a lot of kids out there who don't have dads in the, in the picture and uh, who are not around and it's uh, the responsibility is resting on mom. Um, and yet there are some, some wonderful dads who have stepped up and taken the responsibility when spouses, when their wives leave. And um, do you know how Father's Day came about? Do you know how, what it, how it I was founded? I do not. Uh, a little gal by the name of Sonora uh, Dodd uh, was sitting in church in 1909. In 1909. And as she was sitting there, it was on Mother's Day, and they were celebrating the moms and everything. Well, she didn't have a mom. And, uh, I mean, she had one, but she didn't know her mom. And her dad had really stepped up and taken care of her and taken care of all of the things that a, a young lady needs. And so she thought, man, I would really love to celebrate my father and Father's Day. And so she went to, to uh, Pres President Coolidge, Calvin Coolidge, and she presented her idea to him. How she got to I have no idea. But uh, in 19, I believe that it was 1929, uh, that actually uh, it came about. The proclamation was in 1924 of President Calvin Coolidge. Um, and it became, you know, ever since we celebrate Father's Day. And uh, there are some wonderful dads out there. And we wanted to just, you know, commemorate them and, and talking about them. And do, you, do you remember the movie? Uh, it just went out of my head. <laughs> 
The one about dads with uh, um, Mr. Mom. Mr. Mom. I was Mr. thinking Mom. that's what you were yeah, thinking. Yeah, Mr. Mom, yeah. you know, and, and how he... Uh, his had wife was working. His mm-hmm. wife had her career just all of a sudden she got a promotion and took off, and he was a factory worker, and there was a recession, and so the factory kind of shut down, and, and uh, he was laid off, and so he decided to be a stay-at-home dad. And that was back... That movie came out back in the... 85? Yeah, 85, the 80s 86. when, you know, stay-at-home yeah. dads weren't, you know, the popular, popular thing. thing yeah. And a uh, really cute movie, though, of how... You know, those roles reversed, but how he stepped up and had to fill those shoes of, of what moms had done. And uh, just a great, great movie and depiction of how dads a lot of times fill in those gaps. And, and uh, we, we do stereotypes mm-hmm. of what dads should mm-hmm. be. I don't like some of the series that have come out that show dads of being kind of like, like dumb and, and buffoonish and everything like that. Because the Bible tells men to be the spiritual leaders of their household. And to take that responsibility, and the world doesn't want that to happen, doesn't want the, be, the man to be the leader, it's normally the wife that uh, is the one who takes the helm and, and handles everything. Um, but one of the things that Ephesians 5.25 says, and I think this is one of the reasons why women take the, the helm and do what they do, but Ephesians 5 tells us, Paul says, uh, love your wives just as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her. A lot of guys are not giving themselves up for their wives. They're selfish. They want that, you know. And a lot of times, though, guys aren't doing that. They're not doing their career. They're not doing taking care of their family because they're selfish. They just have to take care of their families. And that's why I think it's so important for us as Christians to um, to really take this word and be in this word and understand what the word says about being the spiritual leader. One of the things it does say is love your wives, guys. Love your wives and children. Watch that. They see that. They follow by example. Um, and then that way we can follow uh, in the footsteps of the perfect father. Um, and that is, is God himself. Um, because I believe God loves his children. God wants his children to know of his love. First John 4.15 says, we love because he first loved us. I love that scripture. We love because he first loved us. And then Romans 5, 8 says, but God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. We didn't have to do anything. We didn't accept, just come to the point where we accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior to be born again. He didn't wait for us to meet his expectations or wait for us to make him proud. He didn't wait until we measured up to his standards. He loved us first completely, constantly, unconditionally. Uh, It may disappoint him. It may uh, even to a point anger him uh, when we disobey, uh, when we stray. But I stand on this. He never stops loving us. You know that scripture in Romans 8? uh, What does it say, honey, about we shall never be separated from the love of God? Right, I'm convinced that neither death nor life, nor angels or demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all of creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Mm-hmm. Nothing. I mean, that pretty well covers it all. Yeah. There's nothing yeah. that's uh, here on earth that can separate us from God's love. Yeah, and so we should, if God loved us first, and he, got, he loves us so much. We should love others. We should. Uh, it's not about us. It's about him. It's not about what we do. It's about what he does. And it's not about what we're going to do. It's about what he's going to do. We're, we're very busy within our church activities here at New Beginnings Chapel. Um, but it is that, that takes second to what Christ can do in the lives of those. Because we're called that we would be saved and become Christians, Christ followers, uh, and then present the gospel, go ye into all the lands and preach the gospel. Uh, So others can have the opportunity to make that choice, and then when they make that choice to accept Christ, they become disciples, and then disciple followers. Um, Joshua 1.9 says, Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be terrified. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. During this pandemic, during this time of uncertainty, now we have another variant coming in, another virus that they say could be worse than the other one. And uh, I will not walk in fear, but I will walk in boldness and confidence and trust. I won't do foolish things, you know, that would jeopardize my family, but I will put my trust in 
in the Lord. And he commands us, be strong and courageous. Do not be terrified. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God is with you. And so I hear lots of talk. Lots of talk in our men's group and different meetings that I'm a part of. And uh, sometimes we as Christians get so bent out of shape at the world that things come out of our mouths that should not come out of our mouths. And it's not a good witness. Ephesians 4.29 says, Do not let, let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths, but only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs, that it may benefit those who listen. What do people hear when we speak about Christ? What do people hear when we are in discussion about politics, about the pandemic, about the way our government is, is doing things? Uh, do we get pulled down to the world's way of thinking and talking, or do we pull the world up and say, listen, I'm a child of God? Not by just saying that, but that they say there's something different in our lives. Um, and so that, that was, uh, as a Christian, as a man, um, we are to set the example. We're to be the reflection of Christ. We're to be the image of Christ. Um, and, you know, a part of this is the discipline that comes along with raising your children. Uh, as, as God speaks into us through his Holy Spirit, there's times he has to discipline us. And when he does that, um, sometimes we don't like it. No, discipline is never a fun thing. It's like the pruning of, you know, the tree or the pruning of a bush. Um, I'm sure if the bush could talk and the tree mm -hmm. could talk, it mm -hmm. would not say, oh, that feels wonderful, mm -hmm. you know, keep it going. But it's what is necessary for it to be healthy and to produce fruit. And that's what God does in our lives. Mm -hmm. For us to be healthy and for us to produce fruit, he has to prune us. He has to discipline us sometimes. And, uh, yeah, it's not, it's not necessarily a fun process, but it's a necessary process. And in our ministry, there have been times when Christ has had to discipline us. J please don't think that being pastors of a church, uh, is uh, everything goes perfectly. Uh, the enemy tries harder than he ever can before to uh, make us ineffective. And there have been times when Christ has allowed us to be pruned, uh, and we didn't like it at the time, but when you look back on it, you see that there is strength and growth like you're, you're using as the, the tree being pruned. Uh, new growth comes. Um, uh, new ex experiences come about when we, uh, when we go through those things which we n would not have gone through if we had not been disciplined. Listen to this scripture. Oh, go ahead. What did you well, I was just going to say, I remember you telling the story of uh, when you were a child and your father um, would discipline you. Um, and you, you told me many times, you said, I got my ideas switched. Yeah. And, uh, you know, and I think back to my childhood and I don't remember, um, my father ever spanking me. Um, I had a relationship with my father that I adored my dad and I, I felt that my father adored me and I wanted to please him. Mm -hmm. And all it took for discipline for me is for my father to look at me and with a very sad look on his face to say, I am so disappointed in you. Oh my goodness. I mean, that was way worse than any spanking I could have gotten to know that my father was disappointed in me. Mm -hmm. And now today as an adult, I think about that with the Lord. And I think how many times do we do things and Jesus looks at us and says, I am so disappointed in you. Mm -hmm. And does it affect us the same way as it did when I was a child? Do we feel that deep conviction because we want to please our Heavenly Father? Mm -hmm. We want Him to be pleased with us and pleased with our actions. And if it doesn't grieve our, whole, our spirit, you know, something's wrong. Yeah. But knowing that we disappointed the Lord, I, that should grieve us deep in our heart. That's what happened to me as a child. When my dad would look at me and say, sugar, I am so disappointed in you. Oh, my goodness. That was the worst thing ever. I can tell you. That my was dad awful. said that very same thing to me. He looked at me and says, <laughs> I'm very disappointed in you. And then he would try, just he'd let me know you, you how know, disappointed I, he was. I have and to tell you, you know, one of my favorite stories of raising our children. And, and it was and with it's our. It's going to be the underwear story. It was with our right son. Now. And one of the things that you always told our kids was, you know, you would extend a lot of grace for whatever, you know, <laughs> whatever the sin was. But one thing that you just had a really hard time tolerating was lying. Yep. 
And um, our son had lied about something he did. He did something wrong, and then when confronted, he lied about it. And uh, he got caught in that lie. And I will never forget, you told him, you said, go to your room and wait for me, and I will be there and think about what you did and what's going to happen. And um, <laughs> you, <laughs> you went upstairs, and you were gone for a few minutes. And when you came back down, you were laughing. And I was like, that is not the reaction I expected from you when you came back down. And I said, what happened? And you said, well, I went into his room to discipline him, and you were going to give him a spanking. And uh, <laughs> you said, when you told him to lay over your lap, he that had this first swat. big bubble butt. That first <laughs> swat was a thud. It wasn't a <laughs> pat. It he had put thud. on every pair of underwear he owned and then stuck a book in there. Yep. And you, yep. you laughed so hard you couldn't spank him. I said, I said that was uh, pretty ingenious there, son. Now get those out of there and get your spank. No, oh, no, it was, yeah, it just but, kind of, that was that. But, but and BJ <laughs> remembers that, and he, know, he remembers, you know, this scripture as we close tonight uh, brings it to light. Our fathers, this is found in Hebrews 12, 10 through 11. Our fathers disciplined us for a little while as they thought best. But God disciplines us for our good, that we may share in his holiness. No discipline seems pleasant at the time, but painful. Later on, however, it produces a harvest of righteousness and peace for those who have been trained by it. And, and there's a scripture that says, spare the rod, spoil the child. And I'm not saying beat your child. I'm not saying that. But, but we've gotten to a place within our society where people feel like, well, no spanking of my children. I can handle it differently. Uh, but invariably, I have seen where um, uh, it's, you know, send to your room, time out, uh, uh, just the, the little things um, without... Uh, that discipline, and I'm going to use as the word says, the rod, um, you know, it, it, I don't know what it is. It, well, I've, I've asked our is, children, I've asked our children a lot, you know, now that they're adults and their parents. You never them. And their, the their parents themselves. Yeah, and, uh, you know, I've, I've asked him this question. I said, so do you think that getting spanked when you were, you know, in the wrong and needed to be disciplined, do you think it scarred you for life or and, you know, they all say, no, in fact, you know, we needed that discipline, mom. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I look back, and I'm grateful. I'm grateful for the discipline that my parents... I didn't like it. In fact, I, I, I really didn't like it. Mm -hmm. um, in my, my family, my mother is very protective. And uh, she has a saying that we're going to have engraved on her tombstone that said, I would rather build fences than send ambulances. So in my life growing up, I felt very much that, you know, there was a lot of things I missed out on at the time, that I didn't get to do, that my mother didn't let me go do, you know, and I thought it was a little over the top and extreme, and she was very overprotective. <laughs> um, but, you know, it's probably because of that that I am here today yeah. by the grace of God, if she, because she was so protective. Yeah. But, you know, that discipline shaped me into who I am today. Yeah. Um, and I am grateful for that discipline. And as much as I don't like it when the Lord disciplines me right. as an adult and as a believer, um, I am grateful for that discipline because yeah. it molds and shapes me into who I am and molds me into the image of my father, mm -hmm. my heavenly father. And so discipline's not, you know, not easy, but it's necessary and we should be grateful for yeah. it. And we, we, you look at it now and I look at our kids uh, being all grown and, um, you know, giving giving discipline is not um, is not fun. You know, and the old saying is, "This hurts me far more than it hurts you." My son reminded me of it. No, Dad, it hurt me really. <laughs> um, but the fact is, is that um, the scripture that we started with in Deuteronomy, um, uh, and also there's one in Psalms, as with so many Bible verses, to teach your children as we sit down and as we stand up, as we walk along and as we lie down to pass on to them one generation to the next the instructions of God. And that's my prayer, is that we pass on the instructions that, remember I've said this before, generation to generation to generation. We will not be here when our great, great, great grandchildren are here. Uh, but what they learn from their grandparents, from their grand, you, you realize that Cade, Cash, Ivy, Colt, uh, Cameron, Drew, uh, Drew Rachel, Rachel, Rebecca. Rachel, Rebecca, they're all going to be great grandparents. Great if grandparents the Lord tarries, as yeah. the Lord tarries. And what we speak now into our children will carry over for the next 
generations and generations to come. It's, we only live a hundred years. I mean, if you look, we have, we have uh, what did Lincoln say, four score and seven. seven and we don't, we're not promised of tomorrow. But I tell you, time goes so quickly. And remember the statement, only what's done for Christ will last. Everything else will fade away. And you know what? There is no, I, I believe personally, there is no greater calling uh, in this I life, agree. I, I, I don't care I if you're, you're say, if yeah. you're a physician, if you're if you're a neurosurgeon. I understand that you have a life-saving uh -huh. skill uh -huh. that's necessary, but I still say there's no greater calling than parenthood and yeah. training yeah. children. The Bible tells us very clearly: train up a child in the, the way, way they should, should go. go. Um, you know, when and write these. When they are old, old, they shall not depart yeah. from it. And um, it's the greatest gift that you can give your children is modeling and being a reflection of your heavenly father. Mm -hmm. um, there's a reason that God is, calls himself our father yes. and that we're his children. Yes. And what a beautiful picture. Um, and we are to carry that on and we're to exemplify that. And so um, just a really encouragement that your message was to dads and I know Mother's Day it was to moms as well. And uh, whatever role you play, whether you've ever been an actual parent, um, you always have influence. That's right on a child's life, on other people's lives. And so um, this message was for everybody. Yeah. Everybody, thanks for joining us tonight. Um, uh, we had a, a little bit of technical difficulties as we started, but everything worked out great. We went a little bit longer tonight. And uh, I am so glad that you are, are with us this evening. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. The ma Lord make his face to shine upon you until we are all together again. In Jesus' name. Good night, everybody. Good night.